Sheriff. Sheriff's office. Sheriff's office. I took an oath when I took the job, and when I get a paper from the judge that says I have to evict this person, and then I have to go and do what the judge says. Do I like it? No. You know, we all have to pay our bills. Um, some have a little more hardships than others, but based on my job and my oath and what I have to do, I do it. Doesn't mean I have to like it. Secure the door. We're now done. Well, the eviction process is very cruel. And I mean, some people make their own bed, but some people are, are, are products of society. I, can't, I, couldn't, I couldn't work anymore. I just, but it's a little bit late now. My life is over. I, I cannot do this. I cannot live sleep in the cold. I mean, there's nothing I can do. I'm 59 years old. I can't live on the street. I'm not the type. I'm going to have to figure out some way of putting an end to this life. We missed two payments because uh, my husband lost his job, which made us behind. And I'm, I'm a college student with a high-risk pregnancy, and they're giving us 48 hours to move out. We have called the Salvation Army, but they don't have any openings, and we, I don't, his family doesn't live in Oklahoma, and I'm not allowed to live with my father because of a certain thing that happened a long time ago. He's not allowed to be around kids. So I, we, we are going to be living, you know, four kids and two adults in my little car because we don't have anywhere to go. Well, I hope I don't have a miscarriage. Um, I feel bad for my kids. I don't know what to tell them. I don't know where we're gonna take our showers. And this is like the first time we've ever had this, any of this situation and it just sucks. I just hope you don't ever have any bad times happen. Hope life doesn't happen, I guess. It's sad. What, what, what do we as a society do to help them? But that's why they become invisible. They don't know where to turn. They don't know what to do. And they, their options are so limited um, once they get into this eviction cycle. But it's a piece of the puzzle that's creating all these social and cultural and economic problems, I think, this, uh, a vast number of our brothers and sisters are facing every day in this, in this community and throughout the state. This can be fixed. I mean, it can be made better. And other states have done that. That children's always a hard thing. When you walk into a bedroom and you see a crib and, and you see baby toys, and you know there's a child involved there somewhere. There has been cases where, where the elderly uh, that didn't even know. I mean, they, their dementia set in and, and uh, different problems were that, um, you know, you have to deal with everything in a different way. You can't, you can't be totally heartless. You will have to forcibly take them out of the apartment. If, if they won't leave, your only recourse is, you know, place them under arrest, which we try not to do that. Uh, usually you can reason with people because they do not want to go to jail. And we don't want to take them to jail, not for an eviction. Their life's already, you know, turned upside down anyway. I'm just trying to get as much stuff as I can out before they lock it up. I owe a bank and I owe another bank. And I haven't been able to continuously pay them on time, so they started garnishing my checks. Basically left my last two checks um, very short, very, very short short that way I can't pay rent or pay lay fees or anything else really so uh, right now we just moving with my grandma and just gonna try to just pay up all our bills and hopefully we get a chance to move back in if I get them paid up or try to find another place which won't be easy with evictions on them on your record or anything so 
it's just a terrible thing to even have to be put out with kids and and everything like that. So, I mean, they're pretty smart kids. They can tell. They actually help pack up most of the stuff. So. It's just the way it is, I guess.